Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to briefly speak about the critical issues regarding our indigenous seeds, our own native seeds, how our seeds are being criminalized, and how our indigenous seeds are not being recognized to the extent that they've reached a situation where they've decided to develop some seed policies and put them into their language, which a peasant, a small-scale farmer, an indigenous person cannot understand. We have our own indigenous seeds. which have been being used by our ancestors for decades, and they're still there. But why are they not really considering those seeds? They are forcing the peasants to use their seeds, which they may think they are the best, what they call improved seeds. Does that mean our own seeds cannot be improved? How best they, can they get their support to the small scale farmers? Also, to make use of their resources to improve our own seeds. That is a major, major critical issue which we really think we can also discuss about it. It is a difficult moment as we speak right now to challenge the corporate's way of thinking. Well, on daily basis, they have new ideas. Don't you also think it is now our time? We should also think how best we can stop these criminals. To me, they are criminals. I cannot associate with, that, with such kind of people. I'm going back to Zimbabwe, to my country, on Saturday. What news am I going to bring to the people who are behind me? Yes, I was in, in Milan for the People's Expo, but there's this big event for the corporates who are really talking on behalf of the poor. Imagining that they are the only special group which can handle the challenges which we are facing, yet they are the people who are causing the challenges. What's wrong with my own native seed? I'm a farmer, a small scale farmer, and since I got my piece of land during the land reform program which took place in Zimbabwe, I've never gone to a shop to buy seed. We are exchanging our own seeds. That's the way of life. And without my seed, I'm totally lost. Maybe what they are taking for granted is that our forefathers and foremothers, they knew exactly what they wanted, what they were doing, but what was lacking, it was documentation. 
which we see as a very important tool. Even if we want to go to mobilize our farmers, we should have some documents in our own mother languages. I'm holding this document here. I can understand where it is talking about myself, really. But if it is a document which is in jargony, because these corporates, they use jargon language. You know how these uh, motorbikes move around? In Tanzania, they call them the Dala Dala. In Uganda, Boda Boda. Meaning they don't go straight, but they have to go zigzag. That is how they put their languages, so that we poor people, we don't really understand. And we assume what they are talking, what they are saying, what is written in their documents is halallah. We can praise for that, which is not the issue. Why then our, our own children, the researchers, at all research institutions, they are not happy to assist their mothers and fathers to put more emphasis on developing on our own indigenous seeds. Is it because we are poor, we don't have money, we send them to school so that they can abandon their parents? Yet when he comes for a holiday at a home in the rural areas, he wants to enjoy the best food produced by whom, used with which seeds. So for me, seed is my life. Seed is my hope. We are the guardians of our own indigenous seeds. No one should just come and tell us, I've brought a hybrid seed. I think our fellow farmers should get more education, more information. And we are the target because they know we want money. They use that op opportunity of themselves being rich people with huge amounts of monies. But truly speaking, in this world, which we are trying to create, we have to work very hard towards improving the indigenous seeds, preserving our indigenous seeds, so that even our grandchildren are not going to be lost. I'm 56 years old. And during these years when I was growing up, I thought everything was going smoothly. Only to realize at a later stage, I'm old, I cannot fight, I cannot run, I'm poor. But how can I really make sure my grandchildren are not going to fall into the same trap? To all of us here, let's really be specific and we should really talk the shock. I don't think if we come here in Milan for the People's Expo, we go back and relax. This is not the time of relaxing. Because once our seed is abandoned, 
our lives is totally gone. In concurrence with the seed laws which they are developing, just imagine how they are promoting the GMOs, how they are taking land away from the people where we should grow our own food. Causing the peasants, the youth, to go to the cities, assuming they are green, greener pastures, which is not the case. A lot of diseases now in the cities, the municipalities can ha cannot handle the situation. The hospitals, there are no medication. There are very minimum medicines to cure all these diseases. And who is causing this? They are the same people. We are consuming dirty food, which we don't know the long-term effects. When I grew up, Cancer, this disease, was not really, was not really so tense as it is right now. We could just hear about the cancer disease, very minimal, but now even a small a, a, a newly born baby is being diagnosed of cancer. Why? Because of the food the mother has been consuming whilst she was pregnant. The researchers, they have all these statistics, but they, can, they don't want to share with the poor. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a long way. I think together, let's unite, let's fight. We have to win this battle. Otherwise, our grandchildren are also going to be living the same life we are experiencing right now. Because these big corporates, they don't stop, they don't sleep. It is upon us. Do we really want to follow the big corporate farming systems, seed laws? And if we can, let's come up with our governments as peasants. That I assure you. We have an experience of our members in La Via Cambasina who are really standing for elections right now to be presidents of countries. And with our support, they're going to make it. We really want to change the world for the better. In these few words, let me stop here. Thank you for paying attention and listening to a small-scale woman farmer. <laughs>